Hey everybody, welcome back. This is the second video in a series of uh, uh, restoration ver uh, videos that I'll be doing on my 69 Camaro Z28. And today I'm removing the, uh, the instrument cluster and uh, the rest of the dash parts as well as the firewall so we can get the car prepared to remove the uh, front subframe and the rear end. And then we're going to go ahead and detail and paint the bottom of the car and then put the car in the paint booth and paint it. It's all the, all the body works ready to go and it's ready to paint. So as you can see here, I'm removing all the screws and bolts around the instrument cluster. And then on these clusters, you have to uh, lower the, um, the uh, steering column so that it gives you room to... Uh, wedge the uh, cluster out of there. So as you can see here, I'm removing the uh, steering column bolts from below, and then I'll be removing the, uh, the cluster and all the parts behind. And some of the, some of the plugs behind are pretty, pretty tight on there. So I use a needle nose pliers sometimes to kind of unplug uh, the items that are difficult to get to. And um, in my case, the cluster is all broken up. The radio has been cut out and there are broken tabs and all of that. So I'm going to be replacing the entire cluster. I'll be retaining the uh, speedometer intact um, and the, uh, the clock is gone. So I've got to get that. And uh, anyway, I'll retain as many of the good parts as possible, but... Uh, generally speaking, I have to replace the entire cluster because, as usual, they're all broken up. And, you know, uh, over the years, people just hack them to death. So, um, and I'll be replacing the, uh, the wire harness as well. So, uh, to remove the wire harness, as you can see here, as some of you may know, you have to uh, unbolt and unscrew a number of items underneath, including the... Uh, the fuse box, which I'm doing here. And that's one of the very first things you've got to get out of there. And that's held in by two bolts. And as you can see here, I'm removing those. And it's really uh, not, not easy access, but pretty easy to undo everything once the cluster is out of there. So then once the, uh, the fuse box is out of there, then the rest of the cluster is pretty easy. And I've found that some of the items that are like plugged into the uh, steering column, it's just easier to unbolt the uh, connectors than it is to try to unplug a lot of the plugs and so on because they, they're pretty much frozen on there from years and years of corrosion and and all of that. So um, as you can see, I'm getting the final uh, disassembly of the of the wire harness. And there are a couple of spots where you have um, uh, grounds bolted into the uh, dash frame. And that's what I'm undoing here. And what I do is once I undo the bolt, uh, the, the screws and the bolts or whatever it is, I usually put that same screw right back into the hole again so I know uh, what, what type of screw goes in there and so on. So it's a little tricky to work everything out, and uh, it's good to take copious photographs of everything so that you know exactly how to how to reroute the uh, um, wire harness once you put the new one in. And again, a, a lot of the parts uh, that you have to unbolt for the wire harness are connected to the steering column, which is another reason to uh, kind of drop the steering column down. So once you get the, the wire harness out of there, um, or as you can see here, I'm, I'm lowering the wire harness even more. 
and then uh, I'm unbolting the neutral safety switch here. Otherwise, it's really difficult to get that. And then once you get that unplugged, then, then um, I have to go ahead and reattach the column because we have to move the car around still to uh, put it on the lift and, and so on. So the steering column and the, and the front uh, um, steering box and all of that will be uh, removed later. So then I'm removing the, uh, the inner ducts that go into the cowl. And uh, that duct goes up underneath that cowl there and it gets fresh air into the car. And uh, the screws that hold that in are these very kind of difficult flat headed screws. And they're really in there tight and it's kind of an odd screw, as you can see. It's a very flat head screw, and they're real easy to strip out the, um, the Phillip head on it. So you have to be really careful and make sure you got a, a screwdriver that fits it perfectly. And then once you get those three bolts out of there, you pull the duct out. And as you can see, it's good to pull these ducts out because they are just awfully dirty. And you don't want all that old 50-year-old dirt and dust to be blowing in your face. So you don't realize how dirty these things are until you pull it out. Then the next thing I'm doing here is I'm removing the, uh, the heater box and the heater core. And in my case, somebody had removed this probably to replace the heater core. And they just loaded it up with silicone and it, it is just welded on there. And, you know, that is just so unnecessary to use silicone. I mean, you know, they didn't do that from the factory. They had a simple gasket and a little bit of, of uh, adhesive to hold it and to seal it. But somebody in this case just loaded it up with, uh, with silicone and it's just totally it's so unnecessary to do that so I had to very very carefully pry it off of there without denting or bending my firewall so eventually I got it but it took took quite a few minutes to get that worked out of there and just like the ducts you know the inside of this of this blower box is just filled with dirt and dust and it's just very unhealthy on these old cars. So it, it's really good to pull that all apart and clean it all out. Even the nicest cars are just full of awful dirt and dust inside. So, um, and again, you can see all the silicone that somebody just lapped on there. And I'll probably replace the the bearing on the fan as well because a lot of times they make a lot of noise so and here I'm removing the uh, passenger side uh, ventilation duct and again those those flat screws are just really difficult to get to and it takes quite a bit of work to get those out of there without stripping the head on them And again, the seal uh, on those ducts is all rotten and everything. So it's good to get them out of there just to replace the, for no other reason to replace the seal. Then the other thing that's on that firewall is the firewall pad. Um, and as you can see here, it is just destroyed. It is so rotten and, and just awful, in awful shape. So again, even the nicest cars, uh, this pad is probably a mess. So again, 50 years old, it gets rotten, it gets water on there, and it just turns it into a, a mess. So uh, one of the nice things is that you can replace that and have nice sound deadening again. And in my case, half of it was missing. 
So once you get all that, then I'm re removing the um, windshield wiper mechanisms and windshield wiper arms. And they're pretty easy to get out. You just pull them out of the, uh, the wiper motor hole once you get the wiper motor out of there. And here I'm taking the wiper motor off. It's just held in by a couple screws, a couple bolts. And that comes out very easy once you get the arms disconnected up there. And then once you get all the, the bolts out of that wiper motor, you have to disconnect the arms from the motor itself. And that's pretty easy with a little 3 8 socket. You don't have to take them all the way off. They just loosen them and then they just comes right apart. And then once that's done, you just kind of work the arms out of the wiper motor hole. Just kind of have to twist and turn them a few times to work them out of there. As you can see, they just come right out then. So that's going to be it for this video. The car is ready to put on the lift now and remove the uh, front subframe, which I will have a full video on that. And that should be an interesting job. And I'll be doing that here in the next few days. But as you can see, the whole firewall is apart. All the ductwork is out of there. And it's all ready to uh, get cleaned up and ready to paint. And again, I'll be re removing the, uh, the whole brake system uh, at the time that we remove the subframe. So again, thank you so much for watching. And please remember to subscribe, like, and share. It really helps uh, support the channel. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next video. Thank you.